Greetings, aviation enthusiasts. Today we're delving into the rich history of the German aviation industry. Think of iconic aircraft like the BF-109 fighter and JU-87 dive bomber, true marvels crafted during a crucial period. As World War II came to a close, these technological wonders set the stage for the evolution of rocket-powered planes. Yet, amidst the success stories, there were bold, perhaps impractical, ideas like the Triebflugel and SAC AS-6, proposed by enthusiastic minds. Let's explore the triumphs and occasional quirks in the world of German aviation history. Today we're diving into the intriguing tale of Ulrich and Wolfgang Hütter's unconventional vision in 1938. Picture this, a time when Nazi Germany sought to bolster its air force against the backdrop of post-World War I restrictions imposed by the Treaty of Versailles. As other major nations turned a blind eye to Germany's covert and overt treaty breaches, the Hütter brothers stepped forward with a bold plan. Witnessing the success of novel techniques like dive bombing, exemplified by the Yonkers Ju-87 in the Spanish Civil War, Germany set out on a path of innovation. But here's the twist. This ambitious endeavor also called for the development of a more formidable ground assault aircraft. In 1938, German Aviation Ministry, RLM, entrusted Hütter with a pivotal mission, the creation of a revolutionary armored ground assault aircraft. Leading the charge were Ulrich and Wolfgang Hütter, the visionary siblings who had embarked on their aviation journey in the 1930s, starting with the development of gliders like the HU-17, which continued to serve post-war. The aircraft they envisioned, had to possess the agility to evade enemy fighters, a robust armored airframe for heightened protection, and maintain impeccable flying performance. The challenge was set, and the Hooter brothers were determined to push the boundaries of what aviation could achieve. The Stubo, also recognized as the Hutter HU-136, a powerhouse designed for the precision of dive bombing and ground attacks, this aircraft was conceived in response to competitors like the Henschel HS-129 and the Fouquet Wolf 189 reconnaissance aircraft, both equipped with armored ground assault capabilities. Within the Stubo family, we have the Stubo-1, a robustly armored attacker, and the Stubo-2, a two-seater variant engineered to match the flying prowess of its counterpart, but with the added advantage of doubling the internal bomb load. Now let's delve into the distinctive features that define the Stubo's role in the ever-evolving landscape of aerial warfare. Powering the Stubo-1 was an inline Daimler-Benz DB601 engine featuring a unique removable propeller, a testament to the Hüter brothers' innovative approach. As they crafted this single-engine armored ground assault aircraft, they introduced a notable feature, a considerable space in the fuselage, between the engine and the cockpit, possibly designated for the fuel tank. In a bold move to enhance fuel capacity while reducing weight, the brothers opted for a departure from the conventional landing gear, instead incorporating an extensible landing skid. This strategic decision not only lightened the overall aircraft, but also posed substantial design challenges. Similar to the Messerschmitt Me 163B rocket aircraft, the HU-136 required a detachable takeoff dolly. To ensure adequate ground clearance during landings, the brothers devised a detachable propeller. Picture this, the aircraft launches its propeller, which would gently descend via parachute, ready to be recovered and reused. To improve landings further, a novel surface brake was introduced, wings inclined upward from the body in a dihedral alignment. However, due to its metal-enclosed armored steel cockpit, visibility was severely limited, making dogfighting nearly impossible without peripheral vision. Despite this challenge, the Stubo-1 aimed to be an air support aircraft that prioritized safety and effectiveness in its missions. The Stubo-1 featured wings with a dihedral, distinguishing it from the Stubo-2, which boasted a lengthier fuselage and a landing skid. It's likely that the Stubo-2 was equipped with machine guns similar to its predecessor, the Stubo-1. The design shift in the Stubo-2, maintaining the same wing size while extending the body, 
raised concerns about potential impacts on performance and stability. However, neither the Stubo 1 nor the Stubo 2 progressed beyond the design stage as the more conventional Henschel HS-129 secured victory in the competition. Despite the intriguing innovations presented by the Stubo siblings, the Henschel HS-129 ultimately emerged triumphant in this aviation contest. As we wrap up our journey through the unique world of the Stubo, we've uncovered the challenges that pilots faced, from impaired visibility in the armored cockpit to adapting to skid landing procedures. The ejection of the propeller during landings added another layer of complexity, making mission aborts impossible. Yet, in the annals of aviation history, the Stubo stands as a testament to innovation and daring design, leaving an indelible mark even after its cancellation. But the story doesn't end here. If you've enjoyed uncovering the mysteries of aviation with us, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel for more captivating content, and ring that notification bell to stay updated on our future explorations. Share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, fellow aviation enthusiasts, soar high and keep exploring the fascinating tales of the skies.